Well, um, our second topic for today is supposed to be very innovative. Um, actually, we're going to talk about innovations in meetings uh, designing. Uh, not only format, but also uh, flow, also interactions, also content. And uh, for that topic, I, would, I, I am very happy to introduce our expert, uh, Julien Collier, um, Chief Executive Officer and uh, owner of uh, Social Dynamite. Uh, who is also a frequent, frequent uh, speaker of TEDx uh, meetings, industry uh, conferences, and uh, um, workshops. So, uh, Julien, your, you. your floor. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm, I'm sorry, uh, I come last minute with slides, so it's a bit uh, disformed, but it's okay, as long as we can see that. So, how are you? How was the evening yesterday? It's a nice place. Huh? Who were to the bars? Who went to the bars after the, the place? Yeah, raise your hand. Yeah, you know, it's part of meetings. <laughs> it's part of design. Maybe not that much innovations because it's for a long, long time ago we used to party also. So, today we are here to talk about meeting design and innovation. But meeting design is already an innovation, actually. It's a concept quite innovative. Who knows meeting design concept? Who's been trying to dig a little bit before or use it already? Can you raise hands? No? You know where it comes from? This concept of meeting design? Who knows meeting architecture? Nobody? OK, so my first slide is relevant. So my first slide is about this book. Does anybody here read this book? Yes, one, okay, at least. Two, I've read several times probably. So if you don't need this book, this book has been written by Martin Van Hester. Um, it is interesting to talk about this because Martin Van Hest is the owner of an AV company. Strange, you may think. He's not a conference organizer, he's not a meeting planner. He's a provider, a supplier. He's been reading re this book, I think the first time uh, he came out, it was in May 2008. Okay, so it is seven years ago, something, a little bit less. And so, so Pierre, you've re you read it. <laughs> You're the only one? Sure? So it's about meeting architecture. So in the meeting architecture, the concept of Martin was uh, we have to be more focused on the array of events, which is quite normal. We all have to face this problem, or all probably. Let's make a little uh, quote. Who is managing events in this room, organizing events? Some, OK. The other, are you uh, destination management or destination marketing of venue? No. Yes. Some sub any kind of other supplier of the, the meeting industry? OK. So we are all facing in different ways array of meetings. Because if the meetings of our customers, of our own meetings are not profitable, we have a problem. And ROI is not only a matter of financial profitability, it's also a matter of having the right goals at the end. So what Martin said is, OK, you have to know your stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders of the meeting? First of all, probably your clients. Who is it? Not that sure, but we'll talk a bit more about that later. Secondly, it would be sponsors. Of course, sponsors are the first stakeholder. If you want to have a meeting uh, with some revenue, you need sponsors and attendee, of course. Am I missing a stakeholder? An easy one? The speakers? Well, I'm on stage, so it's more difficult, but... Yes, the speakers are also stakeholders, and we'll see why in the last part of innovation for media coverage. Because speakers are used to be influencers also. If you highlight speakers, if you create media coverage for them, they will be happy. They will talk about you. We'll talk about this later. So know your stakeholder, know your objective, which means 
know the objectives of all your stakeholders. So it means what are the objectives of the sponsor? Probably meet uh, planners, meet uh, here in Convin, let's take this example. The sponsors, they want to meet buyers. We are we okay with that? So at the end, if you want to measure the ROI of the sponsor, you need to say, okay, you, you've been this quantity of buyers and this quality also, buying power, etc. What is the objective of a speaker? Why am I here? You know? If you don't know, it's important to ask yourself the question, why a speaker would come? What are the objectives of all the stakeholders? And what is the, the key point of meeting architecture? The first key point is you will not be able to reach all the objectives of all your stakeholders. It's not possible. So you have to say, these are the objectives I will go with you. I will go with this objective. And you, you know it's the only objective I will work with. And I will create the events and put my resources, my money, my influence power only on these objectives. And that's the part of meeting architecture, which says, we are not here making an event. It's not only making an event. It's making the events that is answering to my key objectives. And I, I have written down what are my objectives, and I will fulfill only those ones. Is it new for you, this kind of approach? Do you think it's innovative? Do you think it's relevant? So let's say innovative. No. Yes, a little bit. Relevant? Please. Please. No, OK. Thank you. But there is another key point here. And it's, you probably don't know if you don't read the book, but for me it was extraordinary. The key point when you read between lines of the book is this one. Meetings owner are incompetent. Wow, sorry for meetings owner in the room. <laughs> you, have, you, you are not uh, agree with that? <laughs> no, you could. No, no, no. It's okay. You know what this means? You know who are meetings owner? It depends on meetings. We know we have a very complex industry. Some meetings are owned by marketing departments. Some meetings are owned by producers for trade shows. Some meetings are owned by just a, 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 a general manager that wants his sales team to, have a, to be involved. Okay? But usually, you have an organizer and you have an owner. And the owner does not know anything about meeting design. And he is the one that make, is taking decisions. And this is what we are all facing in the, in the industry in most of the time. It's not 100%. Some meetings owners are competent. But this means that the conclusion is that the meeting planner has to be an architect. It's like when you build a house. You need an architect. You want to build your house. You put the money in, but you're not competent. You need an architect to help you with all those different things you will have to manage. And that's the main concept of meeting architecture that has been revamped renamed meeting design. OK? Is it an uh, interesting inter introduction for you? So when we want to talk about innovation in meeting design, we have to be sure that we, work, we are talking about meeting design. And then all the innovation I will talk about, I will highlight them in terms of objectives. What kind of objectives does it rely to? Because we have a lot of innovation that are really not relevant for some events, that are really relevant for other events, or for different objectives. So that was uh, the, the, the first thing. I, you can, there is a second book from Martin Van Est. I don't have any shares in his books, things, so you can, you can buy it, it's, uh, it's okay. And the second book is The Tweeting Meeting. We'll talk a little bit also about that, the, the media coverage, the power of media we can have with social media now. So, about innovation for events. I have tried to, uh, I, I, I've been presented as the founder and CEO of Social Dynamite. I'm really happy that's true and uh, it's nice to be an entrepreneur, but I am also uh, the, the president for the French chapter of MPI. MPI. You know all MPI? Yes. So it's the association, meeting professional international, the, the largest in the world. I think it's 18,500 uh, members. And I'm present volunteer. I'm volunteering. So, but as part of that, I think I I will say that here I am an observer of the market. It's not as an entrepreneur that I came on stage. It's as the observer. 
And I, I have made three different stories about innovation. The first, and it's uh, sorry for the, the, the companies that, are, that could be there and that are not there. I've taken the ones uh, I know and I worked with uh, in the past. Uh, first of all, we will call about, we will talk about the superpower for meeting designers, for meeting planners, for professionals. Professionals nowadays do have superpower with management, event management software. This is the first part of innovation. Who is not agreeing with that? Who is using event management software? It, one of those one or any other? So, yeah. What is the best advantage of these softwares? Sorry? Save? Seven, yeah, the main advantage for you? I know they're just very careful about everything they, they're always concerned. Is everything okay? And they always send that. Okay, the quality, yeah. But that, yeah. My, my question is more, how can we work without them? Before that, what is the difference working with the software or without the software 20 years ago? We talk about innovation. Yeah. Experience and, and time, yeah. it gives them time. When you have 200 people to invite, to ask for their hotel needs, to ask for their transportation dates, 20 years ago you have to send forms with mail, regular mails, and you receive forms, answers. So it costs, it creates, a, you have to print the forms, put it in the envelope, send it out, then you have options. Okay, I'd like to be in this hotel, it's full. Option two. Option three, you remember that? Some of you have faced that? So nowadays you press a button, it sends 200 emails. You press second model two days later, it re sends reminders only to people that did not answer. So this is super power. This is a really good news, no? Not only. No, it's not good news. It means that for professionals, there's no value there. Think about business model. 20 years ago, you have to charge your clients. I will send out the, the I will print, you know, make the materials, I will print it, make, put it in the envelope, manage the post and the, and the mail, manage the answers, phone to people that did not answer, etc. Nowadays, I put a button. It's not the same price. It's really important. It's totally disruptive for the economy of the, the, the actors, the, the economic actors. So agencies, planners. When I was, uh, I think it was 2001, I've read the, the big contract we had in the agency. We were managing each file for each attendee for 7,000 congress, 7,000 people. Every file for registration was invoiced 45 euro. So you multiply 7,000, 45 euro. Nice, nice contract. You know the price nowadays for these kind of things? Any sort? No? It's between 5 and 11 euro. It's four times less. The impact is what? Struggling the economy of these actors. You cannot sustain to have the same staff. You cannot sustain to have the same people. You have to fight against these softwares also that are selling directly to your old clients. So I'm sorry it's not a, a pink, this uh, course. I was here to talk about innovations. For me, innovation has two sides. Always. It's really good for the first time you see it. And then it has a strong impact on the way you work, on the, uh, on the way your clients are working, on the way they are buying, and on the way you create value for your ecosystem. So, for example, I know quite well, it touches, it touches, they do have a lot of modules now. They can even do the project management with you, the task management, registration, hotel, payment, reminders, invite, websites, social media. Okay, so at the end, uh, your clients, does it need still meeting designer? Yes. Not project manager that will do the envelope and the things, but meeting designer that will help them to make the right choice. And that's the purpose of meeting design. We create the value in making the right choice, advising because your objectives are here. The color of the chair, is it important? It depends on your objective. Maybe sometimes it's important, sometimes it's not. The question is, will I spend one hour choosing the color of the chair? Personally, no. 
most of the time, but it, a lot of events, it's relevant to spend this time. And that's the question. So that was my first part, super power uh, for the organizer. The second part, the super attendees, it's more fun. Who knows some of the mobile application provider there? I'm sorry, again, there, nobody, uh, all the providers are not there. I just put some that I work with some, some time. Did you, uh, does anybody experience mobile application for his own event? Yes? What are the key advantage for you? I know it's early. I know the evening yesterday was nice. Any advantage of mobile application? Okay, contact your delegates. That's a, one of the key advantage. It is one of the key advantage depending also on the events you are organizing. In some events, you have applications that managed the, 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 the text uh, related, you're in front of a bus, having the people goes in the bus, checked in the people, and at the end you see, oh, three are missing, I can send a text with a, just a, by a click. Uh, it's not one of those ones, sorry. But I don't remember the name of this one. But yes, but it is relevant for a kind of events. And again, that's the key message. The question is, what are your objectives? Any other advantage of um, mobile application? Interconnection, so networking yeah. facility. And also uh, let them give them a voice. And give them a voice. I like this one. I like the two actually, but networking opportunity is really interesting. I will go into give them a voice because for me, this is probably the most innovative part of the system. What happened? If you have a 10, uh, 1,000 event and you want the 1,000 people work together on several subjects, before those technology, you had to have several rooms with round tables, with post-it, work together. On every table you make, okay, you're the synthesis writer, please write the synthesis. Okay, thank you. Then you take all the synthesis, you put it on table, write the synthesis of the synthesis, etc., etc. It costs you a lot of room, a lot of time. Nowadays, with application, you can be all in the room, and I can assign you tables on your mobile phone, and you will exchange with all the people. You will vote for the best sentences and proposal. And with just democratical point of view, we can be thousand in the room, <coughs> and in 10 minutes, create a common agreement. <coughs> Sorry. So this is what we call ma massive collaboration tools. Massive collaboration. It is not only for events. Huh? This is somehow the way some people are, are, are talking about internet as a massive collaboration area. We are nowadays uh, 2.5 billion of humans collaborating on the internet. It's only the beginning of collective intelligence, maybe. <coughs> maybe not. Not always that smart. Any other uh, use of that? Or maybe... Um, you know Magency? Some of you know, knows Magency? No? Have a look to what they are doing in uh, animation with digital. It's really amazing. It's magician uh, plus digital plus iPad. <coughs> amazing. Uh, I think one of the, the first to create the, the, the voting system was, uh, was my car. And they have for sessions, and we, we used it every time I can. The voting system for question at the end of the session. So you are here, you have a question for me. You are shy, so you don't want to raise your hand. I have the mic, it's uh, normal. Or you have a question now, but you know that the question will, uh, part will be at the end of the session. You write down your question. And then what you have, you can see the list of the question of all the people there, and you vote on the question you want to be asked. And at the end, for our session, for every session, we say we will address the two first questions. So vote. We will address the two first for every session. So at the end, you have a democratic choice that helps you also to uh, avoid moderation. Because you probably, have you faced moderation issue uh, using these kind of tools? No? You see what I mean by moderation issue? You're an internal uh, convention, and you have people asking for angry about their boss, you know, or bad, bad questions. So you have to moderate that. With the democratic parts, 
it's really nice because you will see that there is auto moderation from the crowd. People will not vote for a bad question, quite never. And if it's occurring, maybe you have another issue you have to deal with. Okay, so that's why the super attendees. Um, the, the last part is more, a little bit more tricky. So I said the super poor for designers, the super poor for attendees, and those are a, a three part of innovation that you can use for events. And this is related by the fact that you can now be your own media. So do you know what it means? There's any one of you has already experienced that, being his own media? I have to explain that, that's why I'm here. What happens in the past? If you want to communicate to an audience, some brands uh, use uh, people shouting in the street, you know, uh, let's say 100 years ago, come here, please come here, etc. It's cheap or it's nice. It's... Okay, so then came a big era. It's about uh, 50 years ago and probably still a bit today. A era of communication that we called global broadcast media. You know, TV show, TV, uh, radio, newspaper. And what was there is what we call the superlative, the absolute superlative code of communication. We are the best. You see, you see advertisement. Most of brands use this code to say we are the best in advertisement. I, uh, this is the best remote controller ever for your event, you know? Yeah, this is the best. What do you think about this? Any thought? No? Do you, you, you trust what I, do you believe what I say when you say to you this is the best remote controller ever? Who believe that? You believe that? No, you're not believing it. <laughs> no, we, we can't believe that anymore. For a lot of reasons, we can't believe that anymore. We've been under this kind of communication for 50 years. We're bored with these people saying we are the best. You're, you're okay with that? And there, are, there is a second part of this, is that the fact that the world has been digitalized. So I have to explain that also. Digitalizing the world is what? Nowadays, you have internet. So what does it mean? It means that you can access to a lot of information. You can find information. We have to compare with before. Before, if I want a remote controller without internet, I have to ask my peers, I, a friend, a technician in, uh, in conferences, do you know remote controller? Ah, yes, maybe. Maybe you have uh, a, a white, uh, you know, uh, sorry, uh, yellow pages. Try in yellow pages at our remote controller, but I'm not sure you will find the provider. Or maybe go to an event or buy the, 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 you know, the professional newspapers and maybe there will be advertisement for these kind of things. Nowadays, I just type remote controller in Google. And what I will see, I will see this one, the other one, the comparison with all the others. So when I say it's the best of the world, okay, for what? For what objectives? Okay, this does not work more than 20 meters away. I have a big room, it's not relevant. Okay? So nowadays, the world is digitalized, which means that you have access to all the information. You can compare every promise you receive. This is really important. This means that we, are, we need to be authentic for brands. So this means that they will not say we are the best, but maybe uh, we are the lighter and we can prove it. Okay, because the best, okay. But even that, it's not interesting. So that's the first impact of digitization. Everybody has access. They can compare. The second part, you probably know that not only customer and clients have access to information, but they have also the right to talk and to write about brands. You know that? It's called Web2. It's quite dangerous for brands, huh? It's quite new. And if you see the, the consequences is that most of the brands need to, to, to be humble. Humility in their communication. You have a problem, so I have a problem. You, my client, have a problem, so I have a problem. And you see the big difference between global superlative, we are the best. And nowadays, okay, no, no, we are the lighter only, and if you have a problem, we can, we can help you. But there is a third impact of digitization, and this is the, the key message here, is that nowadays also the brands have the right to talk directly. Not only the customer, not only the clients. 
they can be their own media. How do we have, did, did they have influence and audience before that? They need to be in regular media, traditional media, by advertisement or make lobbies through uh, PR, which cost. And nowadays, if you tweet, you have 350 million Twitter users. If you use Facebook, you have 1 billion and more. If you post a blog, write a blog post, you have, have uh, I say, yeah, a little bit less than 3 billion users on the web. So brands can become their own media, and events too. And that's the really big news uh, of the last part, is that you can have global audience if you use the right codes. Is it clear? I'm sorry, it's the morning. Huh? Who wants me to do it again? <laughs> it's a bit long. It's OK? Questions about, uh, about that? Can I explain for events? I go ahead, OK? I, I, I still have time? I, I don't know the time, sorry. I, it's there. OK, thank you. So this, this is really important because this is totally new for brands, for events, for all of, all of us that we have an impact on a global audience. So who knows the, the hashtag of this event? Who is tweeting? We have three? No. Who do have a Twitter account? Or who wants to have a Twitter account with some moms? <laughs> you want to make Jim a little bit? or <laughs> We can. Yeah, so, so this is massive and powerful impact uh, potentially. Of course, and I will go back to meeting design, this is not relevant for all events. This is relevant only for events that are interested to have a massive impact on a community. Uh, which means probably we will exclude some real internal and confidential meetings, events, in our, uh, internal events, okay? But the power is really great. I want to highlight with an example, you okay? Because it's probably more easy to understand that with an example. The example we've taken is on a trade show. On a trade show, we, we would like to have a massive impact during the, the event. So we have this trade show with a lot of conference, like here. And we said, OK, um, we want the, the best impact, or for what, sorry, the objectives. Let's fix with the objective. We have two objectives. First objective was make media come to the event. Clear objective. We want media here. Second objective was we want this event to be the place to be for the ecosystem for next year, which means the, the, the main objective of having a global broadcasting communication during the event was to be sure that any professional in this activity will say, wow, they are everywhere. Next year, I will be at this event. Is it OK for the objectives? Any of you could have the same objectives? No? Yes? Shy? I don't know. Jim. Jim is the next session. No? <laughs> yes? Ah, OK, cool. Nice. So what we've done? We tried to transfer attendees into journalists. So we were working for a trade show in the web marketing. OK, it was web marketers everywhere. So when I, I, I was not asking, do you have a Twitter account? They all have a Twitter account, so it was more easy for that. What we've done, we asked all the speakers to give us their two best slides in advance before the event. Please select in your PowerPoint, give me your two best slides. And with these best slides, we asked the speaker, give us the verbatim, the quotes that will come with it. So for example, the content is great, but broadcasting it is even better. So that's the purpose, probably, that with this slide, or transform uh, attendees into journalists. Once we have these slides and these quotes, this is the best content we can have. Are you, you, you understand what I mean? When you organize uh, events like this one, like Convene, the purpose of conferences is to create the education that will have inspiring things for the attendee to come, 
Because if they come, they will see the sponsor and they will reach the objective of the sponsor, which is meeting barriers. You, you see the circle of objectives. I'm sorry, I'm a bit pragmatic here, but it's important also. So of course, normally, the speaker slides are one of the best content of the event. And we've done something else. We asked, we, we, we've done what? We recruit ambassadors. We say to the speakers, dear speaker, would you agree to retweet all the slides of the other speakers? Okay, I have to explain a little bit. Retweeting, does everybody know the retweeting part? Yes? Okay. So the speakers are influencers most of the time. They are well known, they have a lot of followers. So what we ask them is, would you agree to retweet all the other slides? Mm. You know, the first speaker say, mm, why not, but why? Then we add, yes, but you know, if you say yes, all the other speakers will also retweet your slides. Oh, speakers like to be well known. They like to have awareness, to have people talking about them. That's their also business model, if I can say. What is their objectives? Let's come back to that. One of their objectives is to be more known, to create awareness of their name, depending on speaker, maybe because they are paid speaker, professional speakers, so they want to be hired by someone else. Maybe because they're entrepreneurs, they want to be a known of their company. Wh whatever, if they're on stage, they have a reason. So every time you give them awareness and media coverage, they're happy. So of course they say yes, or 90%. And then what we've done, of course, it, it, it's just obvious. We create scenarios with all the, the right tweets, with the right slide, with the wild codes, with the right hashtag too, of course, at the right time, exactly when it was on stage, retweeted by all the other speakers. 42, and we had 42 speakers at that time. Any thought about the results? No? So the results, ah, sorry, I forgot that one. And we had something else. I'm sorry, I, I don't have the, the example here, but actually in every slide, you have a, at the top of the slide here, I don't think I have it. Huh? Ah, yes, I have it, sorry. A, a little animation there in the room. This slide has just been tweeted. If you like it, retweet it. Oh, you see a lot of time, if you attend, attend events, people are with a smartphone trying to take the picture of the slides. Finally, they had the, the hair of their neighbor and most of the time. So there you have the right slides with the right verbatim and the ability to engage the audience and it creates massive. I'm sorry, this one has not been tweeted. Uh, it's, not, it's a fake, uh, it's not an example, only an example. But you can imagine the, the number of retweets that you gather with the right verbatim, with the right quote, with the right hashtag. So it creates media coverage. You transform your attendee through your speakers into journalists. What are the results? Let's go to the results a little bit. Uh, it's in French, <laughs> but there's not many words. So we had 12 conferences on this event, uh, 31 speakers, 14 workshops. In terms of Twitter reaches, so reaches means every time a tweet is read by someone, or it's actually every time a tweet is uh, printed on a screen, you know? It, it, it's been on a screen. So 12 million. 12 million rich Twitter in two days. So it's just massive. Second thing is two days of trending topic. Do, do you know the, tr the trending topic of Twitter? No? Okay. When you're on Twitter, on the, on the website, you will see it. Go on Twitter sometime and check that. You have on the little left part, the left column, you have the trending topics hashtags. There are 10. It's regional. It will depend on your regional uh, setup. If you say I'm in Paris, you will not have the same that if you say I'm in Vilnius. So I hope Convin 2015 is in the trending topic today. But what does it mean? It means that it goes into media radar. And th this is exactly what occurs. We had the national TV that came in to say what is happening here. You are in trending topic, we don't know you. That's not normal. Remember my objectives? 
It was our objectives. And because we've been in trending topic for Twitter, we had this media TV that came in for an interview. Does it make sense for you? Yeah? Is it innovative? Enough? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. So this is only the, the example for live. But you can imagine that you can do that also before the event with empowering your stakeholders. So again, let's go back to the stakeholders of an event. You have, we talked about the speakers. Why? Because the speaker are the probable, uh, usually the, the, the key for content. And if you want people to give you media, and I say gives you media, when someone is sharing, is retweeting you, is liking any of your posts, it gives you audience. This is what we call, you know, honed media and shared media. This is the free part of this new uh, media, uh, social media things, is that people will share information and go to their own audience. And this is what you, you should try to do. You should try to have this shared media, and the only way to do so is to have a really good content. That's why speakers are, are the keys. And then the sponsors. What about the sponsors? Let's go back to the objective of the sponsors. On site, of course, the objective is to have more connections with buyers. But before that, the more media they will earn also, the more they will leverage their investment into the event. So what we say, we say to the sponsor, do you want to be retweeting automatically also the slides or all the announcements of speakers? Just speaker announcements. We will never send out promotional. We will never say, you know, this is early registration fees. No, no. Non-promotional content, only good content. Announcement of speakers, news or big news or trends of the economy of the, of the market and the ecosystem we're working is only good content. And then you can engage. And that's our advice. Uh, ah, yes, sorry, I forgot that one. Um, I, I, I will go there uh, first. I, I just wanted to highlight with you uh, some other example uh, on the same basis. The first is the, the international French tech meeting. You know French tech? You have to know French tech. So I will make uh, some advertisement for French tech. So the French tech is a label created by the French government uh, to promote French startups in the technology and web. And so they have their international French tech meetings. And what we've done, because all the people there were here to support the French tech. So we said, OK, do you want to retweet automatically? The best tweet, every hour we will have journalists in the room that will create the best tweet of the hour. And uh, do you want to be retweeting automatically this one and only this one? And you, will, you do not know beforehand what it will be. People said yes. Fair enough, because they want to support the French tech. It's not that easy to convince people to say yes before knowing what they will be retweeting. But it's quite interesting. On the web to connect, we added uh, what we call hashtag battle. So, you know hashtag? It's okay for you? So we had the battle effect, gamification. We said, okay, the more influencers in the room will have a, a prize at the end of the event. Which means that the more you're tweeting, and we have a, every, every 10 minutes we have the, the rankings, live rankings, or I'm first, I'm second, etc. So we had the battle, so you can engage. Uh, and then for e-commerce Paris, which is the, the, the biggest uh, e-commerce uh, trade show, um, it was only boost key messages and the, the, the main one was the award winner of the, of the event. And the award winner, everybody was okay to say, I will retweet the tweets announcing the winner because I want to be one of the first. All the, all the sponsors want to do it. So let's go back to the, to the key point and the success of the recipe. The success, and this is relevant for all. You know, uh, I'm here about to talk about innovation for event, but this is something you can do for your company. This is something you can do for your own marketing effort. If you want to have people sharing your post, sharing your information, you need, first of all, to create content that creates value for your audience. And maybe it sounds obvious for some of you. But this is totally the opposite of what we call marketing of the offer. 
you know, marketing of the offer is about your offer and your products and your services. This is not about that. This is non-promotional. This is interesting. Maybe it can be fun. Maybe not. It depends on your editorial line. You have to be just create value for the audience. Of course, and this is obvious, your content must create value for your brand, for your event, for your company. It has, been, it has to be aligned in your offers uh, market. It has to be aligned with your editorial line, etc., etc. And the last part, the most important one, it must create value to the people that we share the content. Is it clear for you what we call ambassadors? People that we share the content for you. What, how? Maybe for their personal branding. That's the key point for speakers. We help them to leverage their personal branding. It has to be also aligned with their values. And we work with this kind of system also with sales team, where the marketing is trying to work with sales people so they can share the information of the company. If you do a content that is good for the personal branding of your sales team, it will work. So the question is how you can find the right relevance and relevant editorial line. That's the, the tricky part. The only tricky part is to find the good things. And that's the magic with the speaker slides. Because the speaker slides are exactly in the middle of this. So I took a lot of time for this third part, sorry, about uh, uh, media, pro, pro, potential media for events, not only for events. Um, do you have a question there before uh, we change the, the, the subject? You want to make gym? No. <laughs> yes. Normally I'm more passionate, but I'm happy if I get rid of my emails. I'm not even starting about talking anything else. And the most of the people I know, they're happy if they have done the normal work on, a, on the emails. They're not interested in any tweets or things like that. They just would like to have done the work. Mm. Uh, and that's what I so we're struggling. Like, probably I'm old fashioned, I'm too old or whatever, but uh, no. I think the result of using tweets here was quite realistic. Yes. Yeah, okay, about your question before, we talked it's about people who are using tweets and things like that. So I talked about tweets here yeah. because for live events, yeah. Twitter is the only relevant social network that can allow you to have uh, 40 tweets in a day. Yeah. Okay? But this system works really well with LinkedIn. Can we ask the question, who has a profile on LinkedIn? Okay? So it becomes a bit different when you talk about long-term approach. For the live, you, I agree with you. For the live, you need to have a community that is, that is present to, on Twitter because you will not share slides, uh, two slides per hour on LinkedIn. It, it is not the way you can use LinkedIn. So Twitter is on the only relevant part. And it will work uh, probably with uh, the, communi the local community on Twitter. But as journalists, all the journalists are on Twitter. Is there a journalist in the room? I, I know yes, okay. But is there someone that is not agreeing with me when I say all the journalists are on Twitter? No? All the journalists are on Twitter, yes. So it depends on your objective. If your objective is to, see, to have the journalists, you can make this and, add, and go to your objective that journalists will see the event. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's for the live. But I agree with you, the live needs to use Twitter. The non-live effect is sharing information in LinkedIn. It works really well. And everybody is on LinkedIn nowadays. Then considering your email struggling issue, which is a real issue for every one of us, who do not have an email struggling issue? <laughs> <laughs> who do not have that? I, am a good news, I have a good news for you, email will disappear. Yes. Fortunately, we will have collaborative areas when we talk about projects, where we have history of conversation, we can make a blind copy of people, you know, blind copy, never use blind copy, please. Something, you, a, a nice takeaway, never use blind copy. Just forward it later with a little words, it's for your information only, which means that the people cannot just reply all, you know and create mistakes, sorry. So yeah, I think uh, we all have this email uh, struggling effects and it will disappear from, from my point of view. Uh, emails are uh, a really bad way to communicate. 
it's, it's really convenient for a lot of situations, but really bad for, for a lot also. Any other question? I go a little bit for a while. I check the time. Oh, okay, no question. <laughs> this was the example. So my last uh, part of it was the future of meeting design. Because meeting design, if, in, if it's a, a, an innovation by itself, there is a future. And we have here a little video about that. So it's time for involvement and dialogue. Let's go. It's time for new creative setups. It's time for local inspiration and responsible thinking. In short, it's time to arrange your next so meeting, meeting in Denmark. In Denmark. Uh, not, no, but I'm not I'm French, you know. But. If you plan your next meeting in Denmark, we promise you return on your meeting investment. How can we promise that? Here's how. A mistake we often make as meeting planners is to start planning a meeting by choosing the hardware, the physical setup, the food, etc., before even having considered the purpose of the meeting. In Denmark, we think meeting planning differently. To us, a good meeting is based on clear objectives. By asking the right questions, we can help you set up clear and measurable objectives and design the meeting to meet your objectives. This is how we ensure successful meetings with high return on your investment. But how do we make sure that your meeting investment is a return? We use a meeting design concept called Meetovation. Meetovation guarantees return on investment by using four elements. Active involvement, responsible thinking, creative setup and local inspiration. Each element is tailored to meet the objectives of the meeting. Involve and engage the participants, primarily by moving away from one-way communication and towards group the gym, work, the walks gym and effect. talks, time for reflection, etc. As a result, we see a higher level of learning and comprehension and an increased long-term benefit. Let responsible thinking be a natural part of your meeting for both the environment and your participants. Brain food and physical activity is a must in meetings. The same goes for recycling. Responsible thinking not only sends a positive message, it also helps stimulate the energy of your meeting. Use the physical setup in new ways. It will motivate your meeting participants. Work with inspiring furniture and invigorate your senses with playful light and aromas. The meeting can be in a meeting room, in a theater, or in a forest. Everything is possible, as long as the physical setup generates energy concentration and creativity. Let the local environment play a part and give your meeting participants a unique experience they will remember on a professional and a personal level. An experience that emphasizes why this specific destination has been chosen for your meeting. Visit local attractions. Let the local cuisine be part of a lunch and have local experts or pep talkers join your meeting. We can help you identify clear and measurable objectives for your meeting and tailor the meeting design elements to meet your objectives. Using the Meetovation concept is our way of making sure your investment will be returned and your meeting will have maximum impact. So, it is quite interesting here, for a lot of reasons. First of all, it is interesting. Do you think so? Yes. And it is also a, promote, a promoting material for meeting Denmark. Huh? Let's be clear, for the, for the Denmark CVB, it is a promotional material, but it is interesting, which means that I can share it to you today because I liked it. So it is also the same probably lesson or the future part of the meeting elements for meeting design, so the, the future of meeting design. So I think it's relevant with the subject of this conference. And this is also a call to come to the next uh, um, European Meetings and Events Conference from MPI in Copenhagen with the Mitovation concept because they will use their own concept for that next year. And that was my last slide about that. Um, then if you have any uh, interest in having a technology issue or a technology and innovation uh, thought, uh, you can join us also in France for our French event. I will only uh, tell you about this, but it's in French speaking. So the French, the MPI French chapter is organizing its first 
Technology Oriented Innovation for Events. It's a congress only for content, the 30th of March. Thank you very much for your attention. We have time for questions or not? Thank you, Julien. Uh, do we have uh, questions for uh, Julien? I am so clear. Or oh, the evening was so late. <laughs> Let's say both. The first. The first. The first, the first. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. It's a pleasure.